The time has finally come, one of the greatest arcs that we've been able to witness so far in the new dark gen of shonen manga. Jujutsu Kaisen has been able to flesh out stories of the past and intertwine them with the present, but it's this particular arc right here where the pieces to the puzzle finally begin to make sense to us. But we are going to do something completely different than what you're all used to seeing. From what we've seen from the Shibuya incident arc is that there are time frames in which certain events or battles take place and they are scattered throughout. However, we will be going through the entire Shibuya incident arc in order, with every time and date correctly placed. So with that being said, so many developments had taken place all in a single night in Shibuya. So why don't we dive into the greatest arc to have shaped the current state of Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> In this insane arc, we'll first be dissecting Mahito and Geto's encounter with Mekomaru, which would technically commence the beginning of the Shibuya incident arc, or more so was the catalyst towards it actually happening. Anyways, it all starts off with Utahime and Gojo who are on the phone to one another, discussing the traitor who had let in the likes of Mahito and Hanami into the school through the curtain. Utahime receives the help of Yuji, Megumi and Nobara to find out who sold them out. Utahime's money was on Mekomaru. They then explore a hidden location going through each door but couldn't find a sign of anyone. This is when we are switched to seeing Suguru, Geto and Mehito entering an underground place which held the true form of Mekomaru as he was plugged into various life support machines and all bandaged up. It's understood that Mekomaru's real name is Kokichi Muta and he was indeed the one who betrayed the Jujutsu schools. This was a give and take offer though, Mahito offering to transfigure Kokichi's body back to normal if he had led them into the school during the Kyoto Goodwill event. Suguru Geto and Mahito both hold their side of the deal and transfigures Kokichi's body back to normal. This then causes the face off between Mahito and Mekomaru with Geto watching on from the sidelines. The fight between them two is evenly matched as Kokichi reveals he has years worth of cursed energy stored to use against Mahito. Mekomaru understands his position in this fight and knows that he'd need Goto's help to come out with his life intact, but it seems that the curtain which was placed by Geto is in the way of Kokichi's communication system. Mahito then uses his domain expansion to trap Kokichi inside of, but we are revealed to the simple domain which Mekomaru uses as this was created by Ashia Saratsuna during the Heian period. This technique was created in order to counter another domain expansion from within. This had even surprised the supposed Suguru Geto, who was just watching on. Kokichi does his calculations and realizes that once he's dealt with Mahito, he still has 9 years worth of cursed energy stored and one more simple domain in his locker to fight against Geto. However, his plans are completely ruined when Kokichi activated his simple domain. Mahito managed to undo his domain expansion just in time, then killing off Mekomaru. Geto and Mahito discuss what had just happened and Geto realizes he must make adjustments to his curtain before their big plan which would be set in Shibuya. 31st of October 2018, a curtain with a 400 meter radius was placed and that is when the Shibuya incident arc begins. The Shibuya incident takes place in chapter 83 and for me personally it is the best arc in Jujutsu Kaisen. We got to witness a wide range of fights, all occurring minutes apart from each other or at the same time. As for this part of the video, I'll be going over the time in order so that we can get a better understanding of how the events in Shibuya took place. At 7pm, Geto had placed down the newly developed curtain over Shibuya, where only the civilians could not get out. There is no reception within the curtain, so using your mobile phones would be futile to talk to someone. The time is now 8.14pm. Three teams are formed and are on standby waiting outside the curtain. The first team consisting of Kento Nanami, Takuma Ino and Megami Fushiguro, the second team which has Naobito Zenin, Maki Zenin and Nobara Kugisaki, the third team has Atsuya Kusakabe and Panda, these teams are set there to minimize the damage. Well at 8.31pm there are civilians who were out during Halloween all dressed up but it seems that they can't leave due to the curtain which causes a state of panic amongst them. One of the guys witnessed several people being sucked into the train as though it were a bathtub draining water. In the state of chaos, in steps Satoru Gojo, who 
effortlessly walks right through the curtain. 8.38 PM, Gojo arrives at the Shibuya Mall, casually walking over everyone and then rising above to see how many people have been trapped as well as assessing the situation. One minute later at 8.39 PM, we get to see the fourth squad which consists of Yuji, Mei Mei and her little brother Wee Wee who were at Aoyama Cemetery at this moment in time. They then head towards the Meiji Jingu Mai station. At 8.40 PM on the Fukutoshin Line platform, Gojo is then confronted by Jogo, Hanami and Choso. As Gojo tells Jogo to not pull out any excuses when he loses this time around. Gojo notices that Hanami had used his branches to trap all the civilians, to which Gojo understands that if he attempts to run away, they would just kill everyone. However, Jogo has different plans and intends on killing the civilians anyway, as a bunch of them flood the train line where Gojo is standing, with Hanami, Jogo and Choso hiding within the crowd. Jogo, Hanami and Choso then go all out, killing quite a few civilians ruthlessly. This is when Jogo and Hanami try to attack Gojo, to which they are blocked out by Gojo's infinity, but both Jogo and Hanami use domain amplification on Gojo, which is sort of similar to a simple domain but adds a watery substance over Gojo and would make him now vulnerable towards their attacks. It then shows us a flashback of Jogo's conversation with Suguru Geto, saying how anyone who comes in the way of Gojo would just be a hindrance and that he wouldn't be able to use his dome in expansion since it would crush the civilians against the curtain. With Gojo who seemed to have run away, Jogo gives all the big talk but Gojo simply looks down and takes the piss out of him walking straight up to Jogo and simply ripping his arm off and then ripping Hanami's branches from his eyes. In a turn of events, a feral Gojo kills Hanami by blasting him. He then says next. 8.51 PM This is when Yuji, Mei Mei and Wee Wee arrive at the Meiji Jingu Mai station near exit 2, as they are addressed that there are transfigured humans within the curtain, to which Yuji immediately understands that it is the doing of Mahito. Mei Mei sets out her crows to explore the station. She then gives Yuji the option whether he'd want to kill a bunch of mutated humans or simply exercise one cursed spirit. Mei Mei explains that all the civilians have gone down all the way down to the bottom floor of the station since they were being chased by Mahito and the transfigured humans. Mei Mei and Wee Wee head a different way to rescue as many civilians as they can, whereas Yuji heads a different direction to take out a certain cursed spirit. 9.03 PM As Yuji ventures down he comes across a grasshopper cursed spirit eating the head of a civilian. Yuji asks the grasshopper where Mahito is. Yuji then spots one of the nails for the curtain, which was placed by Mahito to cover one of the platforms and plans to destroy it, so that Mei Mei and Wee Wee can make their way. Yuji then gets into a fight against the grasshopper. The grasshopper proclaims how smart he is, but Yuji completely demolishes him in a full on fist fight. 9.14 PM Yuji defeats the grasshopper curse and was able to destroy the nail placed by Mahito for his little curtain, which now grants access for Mei Mei and Wee Wee to go and find the person in control of the actual curtain covering all of Shibuya. At the same time of 9.14 PM, whilst all this was going down, Jogo and Choso were going along with their hit and run tactics against Gojo, using as many civilians as they can to get in Gojo's way and try their best to keep him company. Again at the same time which is 9.14 PM, Mahito conveniently arrives at Gojo's location with hundreds if not thousands of transfigured humans to which even Gojo was confused on what their plan was. 9.15 PM Mei Mei, Wee Wee and Yuji arrive at the Fukutoshin line and not too far from where Gojo is, but weren't near him at the time. They witnessed the train which was carrying the transfigured humans earlier before arriving and understood that they were going to be unleashed against Gojo. A minute later at 9.16pm, the fight between Gojo, Mahito, Choso and Jogo commences as Mahito tests out Gojo and is delighted by his infinity, but as more and more civilians fall to where Gojo is, he is distracted for a split second and Mahito and Choso combine their attacks against him. Although they weren't able to land a hit on him, the humans around Gojo paid the price and were brutally killed. Gojo realizing how bad the situation has become takes a moment to think. The disaster curse's goal was to force Gojo to use his domain expansion which would have ultimately squashed all the civilians and killed them. That's what they thought would happen. Mahito in complete shock witnesses Gojo using his unlimited void for 0.2 seconds. Due to the amount of information being poured out from this domain expansion, all the humans within 0.2 seconds 
gained half a year's worth of information and left them standing unconscious. But during those split seconds, Satoru Gojo was able to destroy 1,000 transfigured humans which Mahito had let off and it was truly a display that only the strongest sorcerer alive could do. But seconds later of all this happening, the supposed Suguru Ghetto drops the prison realm right before the feet of Satoru Gojo. Six minutes later at 9.22pm, the three teams who were on standby are now ordered to enter the curtain. At the same time, whilst advising them to enter the curtain, Ijichi is attacked by Haruta and stabbed right through the back. At 9.22pm, it was also the same time a massive change in balance would occur. Satoru Gojo witnesses the appearance of his best friend, Suguru Ghetto. In that short span of time, years worth of memories jumped back into his mind of Ghetto, being sure that he had killed Ghetto a year ago. Gojo is then apprehended by the prison realm. He shouts to Ghetto saying how his six eyes tell him that this is indeed his best friend standing right before him, but his soul tells him otherwise. This is when we understand who is really behind Suguru Ghetto. Unzipping his head, we get to see a brain with a mouth. The brain begins to speak, telling Gojo that it is a cursed technique which allows him to hop between bodies and take control, also allowing them to use their victim's cursed technique as well. This brain talks about the incident prior, about how Yuta Akatsu was the one who battered the body of Ghettos. With Gojo all stuck, this brain tells him that Yuta cannot become the next Satoru Gojo. He then says his farewell to Gojo, saying that he hopes to meet him again in the new world. Gojo talks not to the brain, but to Suguru Ghetto, saying to him, how are you gonna let yourself get sealed like that, Suguru? To our surprise, Ghetto's hand grabs his throat, and the brain controlling him was surprised by it. The brain discusses with Mihito about his theory which was how the soul came before the body, but that little spasm the brain underwent understood how the soul is the body. Satoru Gojo is then successfully sealed within the prison realm, with the conditions being that the prison realm can only be opened again if the victim inside dies. Within the time between 9.22pm and 9.26pm, Yuji notices something jumping onto his ear and that is Mekomaru's communication device. He announces to the three present that Satoru Gojo has been sealed within the prison realm. Mini Mekomaru explains his situation to Yuji, Meimei and Uiwi, talking about how he was already killed and this was an advanced plan that he thought of if Satoru Gojo was to ever be sealed. Mini Mekomaru advises Yuji to make it to the ground of Shibuya and announce that Gojo has been sealed, because unsealing Gojo would need everyone's help. This is when a few cursed spirits make their way to their location as they prepare to kill them off. At 9.26pm, Gojo realises that time doesn't pass inside of the prison realm and makes life difficult for the brain, by making the prison realm so heavy it literally destroyed the ground. That is how dense Gojo managed to make it from the inside. We then see Gojo sitting back and relaxing on the bones of the people who are trapped in there and saying how he has faith in his students. Between the times of 9.27pm and 9.30pm, Mahito challenges the other cursed spirits on who can kill Yuji first. Mahito comes up with a compromise and says if Jogo meets Yuji first, he shall offer Sukuna more of his fingers, but if Mahito meets him first, he will kill Yuji. They then head off to find Yuji Itadori. From within the crowd, we see Nanako and Mimiko full of anger at the fact that Ghetto's body is being controlled by a brain, with the girls saying that they killed a bunch of civilians and they now want the brain to return Ghetto's body. But of course, this brain threatens Nanako and Mimiko, saying how they should run along if they don't want to die as well, to which the girls say that the brain will regret his decision. This brain simply doesn't care and sits next to the prison realm which is currently processing Satoru Gojo. Also from the times between 9.27pm and 9.30pm, Yuji shouts for Nanami and announces that Satoru Gojo has been sealed inside the prison realm. At 9.30pm, just before Mahito had left to find Yuji, he split himself into two. Between the times of 9.30pm and 9.40pm, Yuji meets up with Team Nanami. Yuji explains the situation to the rest of the team, to which Mini Mekamaru says how they'll need to split up and multitask to get as much stuff done. Nanami tells Yuji, Megumi and Takuma Ino to deal with the curtain covering all of Shibuya, whilst he makes his way to Ijiji's location. Takuma Ino then explains the significance of Gojo being sealed and how the balance of power will tilt immediately. They then vow to rescue Satoru Gojo from the prison realm. 
From above the Shibuya Tower, we see three cursed users, an old man with a moustache named Awasaka, an old lady named Ogami, and Ogami's grandson. Awasaka and Ogami discussing Satoru Gojo being sealed, and how things are finally starting to get interesting. At 9.40pm, Nobara wanders through with Nita as they bump into Haruta, as the pair both face off. Nita gets battered by Haruta, and he also gets every hit on Obara too. Haruta explains that his curse technique is his pure luck, basically meaning that he can get out of certain situations in a pinch. Four minutes later at 9.44pm, Nanami comes across a heavily injured Ijichi. He then finds both Nobara and Haruta fighting. Nanami steps in and uses his ratio to beat the living crap out of Haruta. Haruta realises that if it weren't for his pure luck curse technique, then he would have surely died from that attack by Nanami. Just when Nanami is about to put the finishing blow to Haruta, he says he is sorry and Nanami simply walks away. Haruta is saved yet again by his curse technique. Nobara was watching on and witnessing the true strength of someone who is a grade 1 sorcerer. Between the times of 9.44pm and 10.01pm, Yuji attempts to punch the curtain, leaving Ino and Megumi in shock. Ino understood that from physical strength alone, Yuji possesses more power than Nanami. However, the curtain didn't even budge. The three then try and understand where the person who placed the curtain in the first place could be, with them realising they could be at Shibuya Tower. 10.01pm Ino, Yuji and Megumi fly towards the top of Shibuya Tower with Megumi's new Shikigami. They use a wire to grab Awasaka, eventually with Megumi and Yuji landing at the bottom of Shibuya Tower onto the road and Takuma Ino left atop the tower facing off against Ogami and her grandson. Takuma uses his curse technique, which allows him to summon and use the abilities of four different spiritual beasts. He gets a hit on Ogami's grandson, but Ogami advises him to swallow a pill. She then yells the name, Toji Zenin, and we actually witness her grandson turning into the deceased sorcerer killer. 10.02pm Back at the Meiji Jingumai station, Mei Mei defeats several cursed spirits and is now going up against a cursed user named Niji Ebina. However, this cursed user was begging for its life, but Mei Mei ruthlessly kills him whilst her younger brother watches on. During all this, at 10.02pm, Yuji and Megami combine their abilities, Megami going all out with his Shikigami and Yuji taking advantage to ultimately defeat Awasaka. The time is between 10.04pm and 10.10pm. On the top of Shibuya Tower, Takuma Ino is overpowered by the newly resurrected Toji Zenin and flung off of it, Megami managing to save Ino and take him to get some aid whilst Yuji leaves and heads towards Shibuya Station. Again, between the times of 10.04pm and 10.10pm, Mei Mei is confronted by the brain, as he leaves a diseased cursed spirit for Mei Mei to fight, saying if she can defeat that, then she can't come up against him next. Yet again, at the times of 10.04pm and 10.10pm, Ogami's grandson loses control to Toji, who somehow takes over his body and can move at free will now but the only condition is to kill anything in sight. Toji then kills Ogami, the user of the curse technique which brought Toji back to life in the first place. From 10.04pm to 10.10pm, whilst making his way to Shibuya Station, Yuji comes across Inumaki, who is using his megaphone to help out civilians and defeat curses with his cursed words. The time is now officially 10.10pm. Yuji finally enters Shibuya Station. From the time between 10.10pm and 10.20pm, Yuji is confronted by Choso. Choso is immediately angered remembering that Yuji had killed his brothers. Getting a direct hit on Yuji with his convergence, their battle begins. At 10.20pm, Nanami meets up with Naobito and Maki, but they are then attacked by Dagon. But Naobito manages to attack back with ease, even ruffling a few feathers off of Dagon. To the point Dagon grows into his actual form. The fight commenced between Dagon, Nanami, Naobito and Maki, but they struggle to exercise Dagon. From 10.20pm to 10.51pm, just when Naobito thought he had killed Dagon, Dagon awakened his domain expansion, taking them to a beautiful seaside. Within Dagon's domain expansion, each attack he pulls off would be a guaranteed hit on his opponents. Dagon decides to use 70% of his power against Naobito and 30% on Nanami. Whilst all this fighting is going on, luckily for them Megami enters by countering with his own domain expansion, Chimera Shadow Garden, leaving an opening so they can escape, but he must maintain it. 
Nanami protects Megami so that he can focus on his domain. During all this, Naobito loses an arm. With them all getting ready to escape through the hole Megami created, in comes Toji Zenin, effortlessly grabbing the playful cloud from Maki and going berserk against Dagon with such ease. Dagon is absolutely terrified by what he is coming up against. Toji defeats Dagon and doesn't even have a single scratch on him. They then return to the station with the domain being destroyed. Whilst that fight was going on, between the times of 10.20pm and 10.51pm, Yuji was going head to head with Choso, but Yuji was totally overwhelmed by Choso's blood manipulation. With the help of Mini Mekomaru, Yuji heads for the bathroom, letting off water sprinklers, giving Choso a slight disadvantage since it would be much harder to manipulate his blood within all the liquid. They both brawl in a physical fight in the bathroom, but Yuji would eventually lose by a decisive blow from Choso. With Choso ready to give off the finishing blow, Sukuna looks on with annoyance, but something weird happens to Choso. A new memory was formed in his brain, showing him and his brothers and even Yuji sharing a meal. This left Choso in a state of shock, leaving Yuji with his life intact. Again, between the times of 10.20pm and 10.51pm, after the fight of Yuji and Choso, it seems Yuji's beaten body was recovered by Nanako and Mimiko, feeding Yuji several cursed fingers inside of a bathroom stall. At this moment of time, Toji had grabbed Megami and thrown him onto the road, as father and son prepare to fight. But as Toji pulls out his katana, Megami is filled with fear and summons Rabbit Escape, with thoughts only to evade Toji. From within the Shikigami, Toji easily slices right through at such a pinpoint angle where Megami is. Megami is then cornered in an alley, Toji's eyes go from black to normal, asking what Megami's name is. Megami tells him it's Fushiguro, to which Toji tells him good for you, and stabs himself in the head, meaning Toji overwrote the curse technique given off by Ogami, which was functioned just to kill, and was able to be alive again for those last few seconds, preventing himself from killing his son. Toji is then laid flat out dead right before Megami. And for the last time between the times of 10.20pm to 10.51pm, Jogo appeared right behind a battered and bruised Naobito, Nanami and Maki. Jogo goes on to burn Nanami, then moves on to burn Maki. Jogo then burns Naobito to death, however feels the presence of Sukuna and immediately leaves. One little addition to all of this would be at 10.36pm, when Mei Mei and Weewee had escaped to Kuala Lumpur, supposedly during their encounter with the so-called Suguru Ghetto, who we currently know as Kenjaku after the Shibuya incident arc. Anyways, Mei Mei and Weewee managed to escape the situation through Weewee's curse technique and dodged being killed. At 10.51pm, Masamichi Yaga is guarding Shoko in the medical bay placed on the Shibuya line. Masamichi tells her how if the enemies were to find the location of the medical bay, they would kill Shoko instantly. The reason being because Shoko is the only one who can use reverse curse technique to heal others, which is something not even Gojo can do as he can only do it on himself. Takuma Ino and Ijuchi would have been dead but Shoko had saved their lives. Between the times of 10.51pm and 11.01pm, some big changes happened to Yuji as Jogo arrives at where Yuji is and notices Nanako and Mimiko feeding the fingers to him. The girls then escape so that they don't get killed by Jogo. That is when Jogo decides to take the leap of faith and feed Yuji 10 cursed fingers, which means Yuji has consumed 15 out of 20 cursed fingers so far. Nanako and Mimiko then reappear as they manage to survive Jogo's attack. But right before us, we witness Ryoman Sukuna awakening. Jogo jumps back as far as he can, with Nanako and Mimiko and Jogo feeling the insane presence of Sukuna. Nanako and Mimiko bow all the way down, but Jogo only kneels, to which Sukuna slices off the top of his head. Sukuna offers to hear out Nanako and Mimiko, with the girls rethinking how they could never forgive Gojo for killing Ghetto, but the part in which they hate the most is Ghetto's body being taken over by the brain. Nanako then says to Sukuna that she'll give Sukuna another finger if she kills the cursed spirits and the brain. He then asks the girls to raise their heads, and in the most ruthless fashion he beheads Mimiko, leaving Nanako in complete shock as she tries to use her curse technique on Sukuna, but also has her head sliced into two, with Sukuna telling them how they had the nerve to order him around just for a single curse finger. Sukuna then asks Jogo what he wants. He explains that their mission was just to simply revive Sukuna temporarily. Jogo understands that Sukuna couldn't make a binding vow with Yuji during the curse boom arc, 
and asks Sukuna to make a binding vow with Yuji so he can take over his body permanently. Sukuna says that it isn't necessary and how he has his own plans. He then gives Jogo a deal. If Jogo can land one hit on him, he'll do as the cursed spirit pleases and that would be to kill every single human in Shibuya except for one to which Jogo accepts. At 11.01pm, as Kusakabe and Panda venture forward, they come across two cursed users who are a part of Ghetto's faction. The woman known as Manami Suda and the guy known as Toshihisa Negi. Kusakabe prepares to attack them, but out of nowhere from one of the buildings, Sukuna is pummeling Jogo with a smile on his face. Sukuna is beating the living daylights out of Jogo, not even giving him a chance to breathe. Kusakabe then advises the other two cursed users to run away, but Sukuna appears right between himself and Panda in a blink of an eye. Sukuna tells them, if any human in the vicinity moves, he will kill them all, as Jogo's flaming meteor comes soaring down and crashes into where they are, but Sukuna was looking up at it and smiling. Anyways, during this battle between the times of 11.01pm and 11.05pm, Megami was holding on to a wound inflicted by Toji, saying that he must get to Shoko. However, this is when he is sliced by Haruta, leaving Megami with a life or death situation. At 11.05pm, with the odds stacked against him, Megami recalls a conversation he had with Gojo. Gojo was explaining that the feud between the Gojo and Zenin clan began in the Edo period, when the heads of the clan had killed each other. The head of the Gojo family had the limitless and six eyes like Satoru, and the head of the Zenin clan had acquired the Ten Shadows technique exactly like Megami. So anyways, back to Megami's current situation, he says how he would never be able to become strong like Gojo, and realized how the head of the Zenin clan during the Edo period, defeated the head of the Gojo clan. This specific moment would change things immensely. Megami Fushiguro awakens the eight-handled sword, Divergent Sealer, Divine General Mahoraga, a Shikigami so strong that it cannot be controlled. But the catch is, to summon this, Megami would be sacrificing his own life. Megami with a smile on his face, saying how he'll be the first one to pass on. One minute later at 11.06pm, Sukuna ultimately defeats Jogo, and right before him Ura Ume appears, with Sukuna being surprised that they turned up. Sukuna then feels an immense presence, which is Mahoraga, and tells Ura Ume they have urgent business to attend to. He then tells Ura Ume to not neglect the preparations, and that it won't be long until he is completely free. At 11.07pm, with Megami down and out, and with Haruta begging Megami to wake up and stop Mahoraga, Sukuna conveniently arrives and saves Haruta. Sukuna notices that Megami is in a state of suspended death. He uses his reverse curse technique to keep Megami alive, telling him not to die yet, and that there's something that he'll need him to do. Sukuna understands that he must defeat Mahoraga, so that Megami doesn't die from the exorcism ritual placed on Mahoraga. The battle between Ryom and Sukuna and Mahoraga begins. With Sukuna using his dismantle on Mahoraga, he is then countered by the Shikigami. Sukuna then realizes that Mahoraga's ability is to adapt to literally any attack thrown at him and counter it on top of that. Sukuna has no choice but to use his domain expansion Malevolent Shrine, but he keeps Megami in mind and reduces the 200 meter hit radius to 140 meters so that he doesn't kill Megami in the process. Within this radius of Sukuna's domain expansion, it kills everything and anything inside of it. It goes on to kill all humans, curses, and turns many buildings to dust. Even after all that, Mahoraga is seen to be crawling and regenerating, already adapting to Sukuna's domain expansion. But Sukuna uses his dismantle and cleave to put the finishing blow to the most powerful Shikigami of all time. Haruta tries to run away, thinking that his lucky curse technique saved him from death yet again. However, his luck had ran out, with his body being sliced into two. The fight ends at 11.14pm, with Yuji returning to his body and witnessing all the carnage which had taken place, seeing nothing but dust, debris, and Haruta's dead body. Yuji then sees everything which Sukuna had done in his memories. Falling to the floor and vomiting, Yuji crying, begging for himself and Sukuna to die already. He realizes he needs to keep moving forward. With no life left in his eyes, he heads towards Shibuya Station. From 11.14 pm to 11.16 pm, Nanami is also seen at Shibuya Station, his body half burnt but still killing as many cursed spirits as he can. With literally no life in him, he kills even more curses, but that's when Mihito steps in and punches right through his body. Yuji arrives and witnesses Nanami being killed by Mihito. 
Nanami's last words to Yuji was, You've got it from here. This is when Yuji and Mihito finally face each other again, a fateful encounter. At 11.16pm, Nobara meets Mihito's clone in an alleyway as these two also face off with one another. Between the times of 11.16pm to 11.19pm, Yuji would fight against Mihito, dodging as many of Mihito's attacks as he can getting punched by Mahito and then having a scar right across his face. Mahito attempts to stab into Yuji's heart, but right below him Yuji gives off his manji kick, landing two blows to Mahito. Mahito says that it is now time for round two of their fight. Whilst Yuji was fighting Mahito, between the times of 11.16pm to 11.19pm, Nobara was fighting against Mihito's clone. Nobara gets hit on her shoulder, but she counters by placing her hairpin into the forehead of Mihito and doing some damage to him. Mihito's clone understands that the original Mihito fighting Yuji wouldn't be at its full potential unless they merge again, forcing Mihito to run away to the location of its original soul. At 11.19pm, Yuji notices how Mihito's original body was affected by Nobara's curse technique where she was fighting the clone. Taking advantage of this, Yuji lands a few more hits on him. Whilst all this is going down, between the times of 11.19pm and 11.25pm, Nobara chases after Mihito's clone. At 11.25pm, Mihito manages to reunite with his clone and touch the face of Nobara. Right before Yuji, Nobara's face explodes, leaving her most likely dead or heavily injured. Yuji is then beaten to a pulp by Mihito, as Mihito manages to use Black Flash on him. At 11.30pm, just when Mihito is about to kill Yuji, Aoi Toro arrives, saving Yuji and telling Mihito that they are the exception. Arata Nita, a first year auxiliary manager at Kyoto, tells Toro that he's finished treating Nobara, but she's most likely dead. Anyways, Toro shouts for Yuji to wake up and that their battle has just begun. Between the times of 11.30pm and 11.40pm, the decisive battle between Aoi Toro and Yuji Itadori versus Mehito begins, but Yuji tells Toro that he is basically a waste of space whilst crying away. Mehito couldn't care less and goes to attack Toro. However, as this goes down, Toro manages to make some time to uplift Yuji again. Toro evading Mehito's attacks is then surprised when Yuji uses his black flash and punches Mihito right across the place. Yuji back in action using their famous clap and switch combo attacks against Mihito. It's revealed that Mihito, Toro and Yuji have brought out 120% of their potential. With the pair going all out against Mihito, he splits his soul and also splits apart Toto and Yuji. Toto dealing with the remnants of Mihito's soul and Yuji going up against Mihito. With Yuji and Toto reuniting, Mihito pulls off something that only Gojo was capable of doing and that is awakening his domain expansion known as Self Embodiment of Perfection for 0.2 seconds. Mihito then comes face to face with Sukuna yet again, warning Sukuna that Yuji would be dead before he even gets the chance to switch bodies with him. Mihito then returns and in a single punch, Toto loses one of his arms and then punches Toto with his black flash. With Aoi Toto down and out, Yuji comes in for the rescue and then Yuji and Mihito exchange blows with one another. Mihito enters his final form which is called Instant Spirit Body of Distorted Killing. Although Yuji was fending off against Mihito's final form, he was most certainly putting up a good fight against him. But that is when Yuji becomes the first ever sorcerer to be able to use Black Flash at will. Toto witnessing this from above, Yuji overpowering Mihito with each Black Flash and causing so much damage to him, to the point where Mihito has reverted to his original form and with fear in his eyes as Yuji towers over him. At 11.40pm, Mihito is crawling away with the little bits of life left inside of him as he fears Yuji who is walking right behind him. However, this is when the brain arrives as he sucks up Mihito into his cursed spirit manipulation orb. Yuji is then obliterated by the brain, leaving him all bloodied up. Between the times of 11.40pm and 12am, the Kyoto students arrive to save Yuji just in time. The Kyoto students with a team attack on the brain, but are luckily saved from the brain's maximum Uzumaki technique by Kusakabe and Utahime. Choso also arrives at the scene, angered at the brain, for trying to make him kill his newfound brother Yuji. It is then revealed that the brain was also the Norotoshi camel from the past, who had created the death painting wombs. Norotoshi Kamo of the past 
who's known to be the most evil sorcerer in history, but it was the doing of the brain controlling different bodies. Uraume also conveniently arrives to aid the brain. That is when Choso, who is convinced that Yuji is indeed his younger brother, due to the memory he had seen, then attacks the brain. Uraume uses an ice curse technique on everyone, but that wasn't enough to subdue them. Uraume then uses a much more terrifying ice technique to which everyone thought they were going to die. Luckily to their surprise, Yuki Tsukumo saves them and asks the brain for his reply as to what kind of girls he is into. The two then discuss what the brain's plan is. The brain explaining how Japan would be the perfect example to turn everyone into sorcerers simply because of the presence of Master Tengen. The brain claims that the only way to do so is to create such a chaos in the country that not even he can control. The brain then displays he can affect Master Tengen's Jujutsu barrier, shocking Yuki. This is when the brain reveals that he had just awoken several of the sorcerers he had made binding vows with during the past 1000 years through remotely using the idol transfiguration he absorbed from Mihito, basically meaning that the brain has just rebirthed the most powerful sorcerers of the past 1000 years into the new world. The brain then unleashes thousands of cursed spirits as a distraction, holding on to the prison realm and telling Yuji that he expects a lot from him, announcing to Sukuna personally that the golden age of curses has returned as he escapes alongside Uraume. And that was every single fight and event which happened in order of time during the Shibuya incident arc. Well that was the Shibuya incident explained in order concerning the official times which Akutami had revealed to us in each chapter. I've also made a massive Jujutsu Kaisen timeline video just over a year ago. If you'd like to know more about the timeframes in JJK, then I suggest you check that out. Anyways, this was a pretty long video, and I do hope I've given you all a better perspective of the Shibuya incident arc. Let me know what your favorite part about this arc was down in the comment section below. As always, like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you all in the next one.